everyone welcome back to my channel thank you so much for tuning in so recently went to the art store and i came across this really interesting sketchbook there i was just really intrigued because i really like the size of it it's um, quite thin in the spine and so i feel like it'll be really kind of easy to uh, pick up and sketch in and it is a hardbound sketchbook which i uh, that's how I prefer my sketchbooks to be um, above any other types of sketchbooks and apparently the pages are tanned in color um, I guess that's where the cappuccino name was inspired from and so yeah this is uh, what inspired uh, me to make today's video I thought it'd be really fun to try out this new sketchbook and give you my first impressions on it so along with the sketchbook, I did pick up some uh, new drawing materials to try out as well. I picked up these uh, Stabilo 0.88 uh, felt tip pens and I have found in the past I really enjoy sketching with them so I picked up uh, various uh, different colors in them to sketch with. And uh, along with that, I have I picked up one zebra midliner, um, kind of like a highlighter pen to hopefully be able to do like an under drawing with and then go over that with the Sabilo pens. And lastly, I also picked up some of these Tombow water-based dual-ended, I guess like marker pens. Um, I saw my friend Cosmic Spectrum here on YouTube use these as well and that's what inspired me to pick these up for myself. But before we get into today's video, I have something I want to share with you guys that is really, really exciting, which is the um, proof of my art book called Tumble. So this is the sample copy that I received from my manufacturer and because it is a sample copy, it is unfortunately missing a pretty crucial part of the cover, which is the title um, because the title was meant to be done in like a gold stamping effect and they couldn't do that for the sample copy. So let's just imagine the title being right across um, this section here. So this is how the book came out and I'm so thrilled with it. Uh, for me, I was really nervous about this whole process, not just the Kickstarter and actually going through all of that, but getting something like this printed because there's just so many things that could potentially go wrong. But no, uh, I really love how this sample copy came out. The final copy will have uh, spot UV accents, which is kind of like a glossy accent over all of these butterflies. And of course the title will be in gold. So it's just gonna look really, really nice. Um, and it also the cover is gonna have this like nice velvet touch um, feel to it, which was one of the stretch goals that we reached thanks to all of my lovely backers. So without further ado, I will give you all a quick flip through of the inside pages. Now do bear in mind that this is a um, sample copy. So uh, I have gone and made a few changes here and there. So don't expect everything to look the way it does. Uh, in this flip through because there are some changes that I have made. So yeah, just a quick flip through for you all just to give you an idea of what uh, the book is going to look like. There are some images in here that uh, has not actually been shared yet on my Instagram. I probably have shared them on my Patreon, but not on Instagram. So I won't give all of it away here in this video, but that is how my book uh, came out and I'm so so happy with it. I think it turned out beautifully and I'm so excited to get the final uh, copy in my hands in a couple of months. So if you are interested in picking up my very first art book and you missed out on the Kickstarter for whatever reason, um, I now have them available on my online shop for pre-orders. So uh, if you follow the link down below in the description box, you can uh, pre-order and reserve a copy of Tumble for when it comes out in a couple of months. So I hope you enjoy this little sneak peek of my art book. And without further ado, let's get back to the video. So in today's video, I figured I am going to do some figure drawing studies from 
the reference packs made available by Graffiti Studio. In today's video, I'm going to be using one of their reference packs called Female Gesture Drawing Reference Pictures for Artists, and I am happy to be an affiliate with them. So if you are also interested in checking out any of their amazing resources, definitely use the code CHRISHONG20 for 20% off all and any of their reference packs made available on their Gumroad and study along with me. All right, so enough talking, enough promotional stuff. Let's finally get into our video. I think I'm gonna skip the first page of the sketchbook because, you know, it's just a lot of pressure, you know, you know what I'm saying. Um, and I also, I don't know, I don't even, know if I want to draw on this on the back of the first sketchbook just because it feels I don't like the feel of the paper right up against like the cover I find it kind of too stiff like I like a more cushiony feel when I'm drawing so I think I'm going to start on this page which is the third page of the sketchbook and uh, it's more comfortable for me anyway because I'm right-handed um, and I don't have to like deal with this annoying spine <laughs> so yeah this is where we're gonna start and hopefully we can just fill out this whole page of some uh, just anatomy studies. So this is the first drawing that I'm going to work off from. Figured it was kind of a an easier pose to start with because it's not like super duper dynamic. I have a hard time drawing the like really dynamic poses right off the bat especially because i haven't done any warm-ups before the video like today so you're gonna see me warming up probably throughout this video so which pen are we gonna start with let's start with the uh zebra midliner pen to just block in this figure so i'm gonna just Kind of map out how big I want this uh, drawing to take up on the page. You know, I don't want to draw too big. I think I want to keep these fairly small. Um, so this is, oh boy. So just blocking things in. And because this is like a highlighter color and it's like not showing up very well, very well. I feel a little bit freer to make mistakes. You know what, let's plant the feet here. I don't know if, can you guys even see this? I think this might be kind of a challenge for this video. I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom y'all in a little bit. So hopefully you can see that. I think so. By the way, the, the lighting here is a little bit overcast. So you're not getting the <laughs> true sense of the color of the paper. It's definitely coming off very gray on the screen, which is unfortunate. It's a very lovely, lovely color in person, I promise you. So yeah, uh, I'm just not worrying about how the drawing looks. Once I start going in there with the pen, you know, we can cover up our bad initial drawing, but just trying to get the placement of all the important bits here. All right, I think I'm ready to go in with, I'll go in with this pen, which is one of the lighter uh, colored Stabilo pens that I have. I'm gonna try going in light and then gradually build it up with like the darker pens. So yeah, let's... Start with the head. Because I'm drawing pretty small, I really don't want to get too bogged down by any unnecessary detail. I'm gonna just concentrate actually on getting the lighting statement as opposed to getting like a fine drawing, being more like paying more attention to the tone of things. So the arms are quite important here. I really want to get the sense that that pole is sitting on top of the, or like behind the deltoid, but then on top of the arm, and then it just kind of weaves in and out. Yeah.
Hmm. I don't really know what to talk about. I mean, so far, I really like how the pen looks on this paper. I definitely picked like a warmer palette and because the paper itself is on the warm side, I think it works really nicely. So go me. Trying to get these shadow patterns so I can avoid having to just like draw like outlines instead show show the form through these tone uh, like shading lines. And I wonder if this would be more interesting if I were doing like portraits instead of these figure drawings because I don't really see a need to like really layer much of the pens together and finding this is just enough. But we'll see, we'll see. We'll see, uh, this is a bit more of a standard pose, so maybe we'll have a bit more fun with some other poses coming up. But yeah, I love, I just love these photos so much. They are so descriptive and yeah, I feel like it's so helpful as an artist. Yeah, maybe I'll do some of the um, shading with, like shading of the legs, because the legs are getting pretty dark, but I don't really want to get too heavy handed with my drawing here, like with my pen. So maybe I'll do that with some of the Tombow markers instead. if uh, there's been any bleeding on the back. Huh, wow, to my surprise so far, there hasn't been any bleeding uh, on the other side of the paper. There's like, I can tell a little bit um, where the marks are, but no like true bleeding on the other side. So that's kind of encouraging. So I'm gonna bring in this, the lightest Tombow marker that I have and see how uh, it looks when I go over it, over some of the uh, like darker areas with this, particularly in the legs, to like move this leg back in the space a little bit. So I think that's working pretty well actually. I think I'm gonna put this whole leg into shadow. Um, actually pretty subtle so I might have to go in with a different marker but I really like like I like having this marker for the subtlety that's why I got this color so that I can layer the tone as I go so I don't go too dark too quickly Let me fill in this, um, the, I guess, the clothes with this marker here. And um, I think I'm gonna just fill in her hair with this, the midliner highlighter, cause that's fun. Maybe I bring in the slightly darker marker for some of the like darker values, but I do have to be a little bit more careful with this one. But it is fun carving out some of these like deeper shadows from the light, I like having that like crispness. But I can feel the paper getting a little bit saturated now. 
which is a little bit scary. Hopefully it's not too bad on the other side. Oh, again, you know, not so bad. I can tell the paper is wet, but it's not bleeding. I don't know how far I want to go with this on this side. Might be making a mistake here. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, probably. Probably a little bit too contrasty, eh? I don't have an in-between of this marker color and the one that I used just before, so this is just what it's gonna have to be. But we'll make do. Man, I do wish I had, like, legit markers. <laughs> Copic, please sponsor me. Please, please. Maybe I want to put this leg into like a deeper shadow just because that's how it looks like in the photo to me now I'm going back over it with that lighter marker yeah I'm not sure how I feel about that decision <laughs> to go in with that darker marker there but we've already made the bed, so I'll lie in it and just try to make do with what I've got now. So going over all of this with the marker, I feel like it's kind of, it's made the drawing feel a little bit kind of noodly. So now I'm gonna go back in with a slightly darker Stabilo pen from the first one we used and just draw the, bring the drawing back out essentially. And like refine the drawing from my initial pass, which was a little bit messy, I would say a little bit kind of careless, but get a little bit more, bring a little bit more accuracy if I can help it, but not feel like I have to go back and redraw everything because I think we can leave a little bit to the imagination. Yeah, I like how these pens are layering together. It's fun. I feel like I might want to just switch to doing portraits or something right after this one because, well, maybe maybe we stick to anatomy studies, but perhaps try it in a slightly different method than what I used here. Because I feel like it's a little bit boring. <laughs> I mean, what do you guys think? Is it boring? I don't know. I feel like that was kind of boring. <laughs> I feel like we can do better. And maybe portraits will be a little bit more exciting. Or maybe, you know, I don't necessarily work with these pens exclusively. Maybe I'll bring in some other material that I just typically use. Let's uh, bring some of those muscles out a little bit better. So I think that looks really cool, but uh, I kind of fudged that hand. <laughs> You know what, let me balance out this really big hand by making this one maybe a little bit bigger too. Ugh, anyway, so that's our first one down. Um, I kind of feel like it was a little bit on the boring side. So maybe we do something else. Maybe we try something a little bit different. You know what, let's do one more in this kind of a style just to show you, just to like give you a demonstration of how I build up these um, sketches and maybe for the rest of the video we will try some other ways of drawing them so that there's a little bit more variety in what I end up talking about in the video. So this is our second pose here. Um, I really like this pose. I feel like it's gonna be a bit of a challenge um, to try to get 
that separation of like the front plane of the body with the side plane of the body. I hope you guys know what I mean. Um, I'm gonna start this one with this kind of pinkish Tombow marker and maybe I'll draw it slightly bigger than what I had. So this one is definitely a little bit more visible than the highlighter. So I feel like I can't be too like willy nilly with it. I have to be a little bit more careful, but whatever. I don't mind seeing like a lot of the under drawing personally, especially at the top. If the final layer is <laughs> done well, then I don't really mind uh, seeing like a really messy under drawing. Um, I'm using just like a lot of negative shape cues to help block it in. I'm sure I will have to go back in and like move things around after the fact. I'm sure this is not a very accurate uh, like block in, but we'll see. I really like how this pink looks on this tone paper. I'm really digging like the warm neutrals lately. I feel like definitely warm neutrals are in like in fashion. Like maybe that's a part of it. So yeah, maybe I'll go in a little bit more with this marker. Maybe like start filling out some of the the tonal aspects and then bring the the stabilo pen to draw over top of it. Now let's get that head in. Sometimes I have a really hard time like attaching the head to the body. I don't have like a set method of doing it. So sometimes it doesn't look quite attached. But so far I'm really liking just filling out the tone with this marker. It feels just less high stakes because it's not so contrasty. It's not like, it doesn't feel quite final, you know? So I think that's what I like about it. So I wanna make sure to get some of these like, muscle definition. Yeah, there's a lot of foreshortening going on in the torso there, so I gotta make sure it doesn't feel flattened out. I'm gonna put this leg in shadow. Bring some of that cast shadow in the back there. To kind of ground ground the legs. And it's probably about time that I go in with a finer pen now. Yeah, actually, I like the amount of control I can get with these Stabilo pens. I mean, I wouldn't say it's nearly as much control as you can get with the ballpoint, like big ballpoint pens, but I like sketching with these because it requires less pressure from my hand. And so I just find it easy to sketch with just like it's less strenuous to sketch with because the ink just flows uh, with less effort. So you're cutting into some of the, the block in that I did initially. Don't feel like you have to follow everything line for line. I'm always dr nervous drawing limbs that are a little bit further out from the body. Not as confident in my strokes with this leg here, but slowly filling in the gaps. I 
All right, so let's zhuzh this up a little bit more. I'm gonna go back in with the, the midliner here for the hair, for that red, red hair. And then go in with this color again for her uh, outfit. And then go in with this very light colored marker and just go in with the initial tone pass. And see what we end up with here. Yeah, I feel like this was just kind of boring. <laughs> There's not much to talk about. I don't know what I don't know what to talk about here. Hmm. Right here is the slightly darker marker for some of these darker shadows. Do I fill, fill this in or do I just keep it a shape like this that's kind of interesting i'll probably just fill it in let's just fill it in Yeah, can you guys tell I'm not really, so I'm not really feeling these. I'm not gonna lie, but you know what? Let's just, let's follow through with this one and then we'll switch it up for the next drawings. slightly darker pen for some of the accents and like fine tuning. Uh, make sure not to go overboard and draw over everything because I feel like that'd be too heavy handed. Yeah, you know, that's not so bad, right? <laughs> it's aight. I'm throwing in some more like stylistic lines to like try to make the drawing a little bit more interesting <laughs> as opposed to accurate because we're past that stage now. So, you know, uh, use what you got. Use use your like design sensibilities to throw everyone off, trick people into thinking this is a better drawing than it is. That's kind of the artist's like power, in my opinion. that I think I think we might be done here 
So this is how these two drawings turned out. Um, let me try to comment on like how the paper felt while I was using them. Uh, I think honestly the paper feels great. It does feel like when I go over top of it with my fingers, it does feel a little bit, a little bit wet. Um, but it might just be because it is, it hasn't had time to settle down just yet. But it wasn't such a struggle to layer everything over top of it. I really love how the colors all look together. But I kind of feel like at this point, I want to try something a little bit different. So for this pose here, I'm going to be using my Pentel uh, 0.7 millimeter lead pencil. Probably has an HB lead in it. And I really love this pose that I'm gonna draw next. What I really love about it is just the intensity of her face, especially. Um, just looking down all brooding like that. I really, really love just the gesture of that that head, I guess, um, looking down. And the lighting is uh, dramatic and great. So hopefully we will have some fun drawing this one. Again, like, I don't wanna draw these studies like too Big because I find when I do that, I tend to focus more linearly. And um, as you know, if you've seen my last video where I do these studies, I want to focus more on the tonal aspect of these poses rather than trying to get it like linearly perfect, like in terms of outlines. I have no idea what I'm doing right now. I feel like this this is like like a really weird block in that I'm doing. I mean, it's probably because I'm using pencil, so my my brain is already like, well, you know, I can erase. So, you know, less pressure, just kind of throw lines around. If you've been a follower for any time, like you'll probably know that I used to never draw with pen, but I have been recently, like in recent months. And I definitely feel that it has helped me be a lot more decisive with my mark making, which is great because I used to be so indecisive. I might have to actually just erase <laughs> most of this because I realized that I made the torso entirely too short. And what's easier to erase? The top or the bottom? Let's do the top. Ooh. See, now we get to test how this paper handles erasing and I would say that's pretty good. Wait, do I have enough room there? Oh, you know what? I'm just gonna re I'm just gonna just gonna start over. Maybe less uh, instead of blocking the whole thing out, what if I just start from one corner of the picture and then just branch out like how I talked about in my last video where I did these kinds of studies because honestly I have more fun drawing like that and this it's not like the most complicated pose so hopefully I won't shoot myself in the foot what I really love about this pose is just her expression and uh, the perspective of her head Getting the subtle overlap of the cheek here so that this perspective is convincing. Yeah, it's all about the overlaps. Like what overlaps what that really sells the perspective that you're trying to establish. Yeah, well this drawing is gonna end up being bigger than I was expecting. That's the danger of just like starting from one corner and then slowly branching out and yeah probably gonna uh, probably gonna end up hitting this foot here which really sucks really sucks but uh, maybe we can maybe we can somewhat avoid it maybe she'll have really short arms let's see i really want to get that sense that she's like really raising her arm arms above her head when my drawings overlap like this. No. Oh well. This is really why good block-ins are important and uh, I should uh, take some time to figure out my ideal block-in method for these. But yeah, so far pencil feels great on this paper. 
Uh, actually, it, I would say it feels better than the tone gray paper by Strathmore. Uh, I find that paper a little bit challenging to draw on personally. Like it's a little bit gritty. Okay, let's move on down and start building up the rest of the drawing. I really love how that rib cage, the stomach kind of tucks in under, that like rib cage pops out. And then there's this like bend in the torso here. I don't know, I look, I look for things like this. Yeah, to me, it's so much more fun drawing like this, just like filling each little puzzle piece out one by one, revealing the image from one corner to the next. Let's uh, not get carried away with the anatomy too much and just concentrate on getting the overall, like the big shape of the shadow patterns. This whole thing can be in shadow. Yeah, this drawing is gonna take up the whole page, isn't it? <sighs> Planning. Why did I draw this one so big? Now it's gonna be difficult to fit any other poses in. Maybe a good excuse to stop early. <laughs> so, you know, I'll probably just throw this whole leg into shadow without thinking too much about it. And then go from there. Cause I feel like the, the leg that's out in front is the more uh, interesting leg because it's very like tensed up. So that's the leg that's gonna get the more interesting treatment in terms of the rendering and like cross hatching. But I'll still like indicate little bits of little bits of anatomy. The knee, for example. I don't even really care about this back leg here. I don't. I don't want it to take up too much, like bring too much attention to it by yeah, being too rendered. Hmm. Maybe we try bringing in the white color pencil just to see like how highlights look on this paper. Now let's try bringing in this like Prisma color white color pencil. Uh, this arm is catching the light. Actually, maybe not white, you know? Let's bring in a light yellow. That will work better with the tone paper. It'll look a little bit more. It'll be fitting. Yeah, let's. Uh... Is this even. This might. Okay, maybe I, I might have to go back in with the white. Or maybe this like salmon peach color. Okay, I might have to go back in with the white. I realize that it's not light enough to make a difference. There. All right, going back to white. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe this is not like the most interesting test subject. Maybe I should have done this video with portraits instead. I feel like I feel like this is kind of boring. I mean, do let me know if you're enjoying this because that will make me feel a little bit better, but I feel like portraits would definitely have been a little bit more interesting. We could have done better, but you know, I will persist and uh, deliver 
a full video for you guys, a finished video. I won't give up here. But yeah, I think I think those those highlights did kind of add a little bit more interest to this drawing. All right, gonna move on from this one now. Just look at this horrible placement. <laughs> like, this is such an awkward area of space for me to draw in. Um, it's just, just no space. I'll have to find like a lying down pose. And here is also an awkward bit of space, but um, you know, I'll do my best. I am going in with my trusty purple big ballpoint pen with this one. And I picked this pose to draw in this little space here. Um, I really like the strong angles of this pose and I really like her like, again, very intense expression. I see a lot of interesting shadows at play here. The only annoying thing about this pose is how the leg that's bent in front is the exact same as the previous pose. So that's gonna be a little bit repetitive for me. But yeah, this time I really have to I really have to be mindful of uh, just like my placement. Uh, I'm just gonna roughly just like scribble, 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 scribble. Make sure that I have enough space to fit everything in. Scribble, scribble, scribble. The head a little bit too small. Yeah, that that leg in front is a little bit annoying because it's so like identical to the previous pose. So having to draw it again. Ugh. Ugh. All right, maybe we can start kind of going in now. Maybe, maybe yeah, I maybe approach this a little bit differently. Really, just look at the shadows. That's what I wanted to do with the previous pose in pencil, but kind of didn't end up going that way. Yeah, concentrate on the shadows, establish the shadows first, and then, and then carve out like the details. So that's what I'm gonna try to do here. Kind of merge the the shadow falling across her face with the shadow of her hair into one big shape. And just this shadow here, it's like big shape. I think I'm just gonna fill it in like that for now. And this arm, I'm just gonna drop most of it in shadow like that. Yeah, I love how this ballpoint pen looks, the color of it, how it looks on this paper. It's very pretty. Again, uh, my lighting here is very overcast, so there's, it's giving it a really cool cast to everything. You can't see the, the true warmth of the paper. It's a really nice like peachy color. I rather like it a lot. that this knee is a little bit too short. So I'm glad I caught that before going in too uh, heavy with it. It's hard to portray bent legs like this without making it look 
like severed. How do I make this leg look not sausagey? It's tough. I'm trying to indicate a bit of a knee there. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's gonna be tough. <laughs> I think we're pretty much done with this one. I guess we have time for one more. I'm not totally exhausted yet, like I usually am with by the end of these videos, especially these like demonstration y videos. Yeah, I can get pretty tired. Okay, how do I make this leg look more? You know what I mean? Like this leg looks a little bit stumpy right now. <laughs> how do I make it less? I mean, it is hard to do with ballpoint pens because I can't backtrack. Okay, let's just concentrate on things we can do. Like strengthening the writing statement. There is our fourth pose here. Maybe we have time for another one if I can find something to squeeze into this little awkward little space. Yo, I may have just found the perfect pose to fill in this space with. Look at this, just look how perfect it is for this awkward little space on the bottom of the sketchbook here. I'm gonna try to do it quickly, you know, kind of like a lightning round pose. Maybe do it exclusively with this pen like freehand it and see what happens. I might regret it. I don't know. We'll see how. <sighs> you know what? I'm not brave enough to freehand it with this pen. To start out, maybe I will uh, go in with like a highlighter and block it in first just cause yeah, this is not, this is not the easiest pose to try to freehand. Like, let's be real. Like there, are, like everything is all stretched out. <laughs> I don't want anything hanging off the page, so let's try to be let's try to be safe. Just kind of use every tool at our disposal. Oh, like this is not an easy pose. Maybe it'll end up looking a little bit stylized too. Who knows? To hide, because I know I'm not gonna get this to be very accurate it might look really odd. <laughs> so to hide any imperfections might end up making it a little bit more stylized. Who knows? Make sure the hands are on point and in the frame. All right. I'm gonna go in now with this felt tip pen again. Maybe, yeah. I'm gonna go in with the head because I know I'm gonna struggle to place this head once I start on the body because it's like at a bit of an angle and I can't see the neck. So let's start with the head and then build up from there. Try to get the perspective of the head right. And so it looks like we're looking down Let's get this like really strong deltoid in. As long as the hands are not falling off the page, I will be happy. So it looks like we're gonna be okay because with a pose like this if the hands and feet were cut off like 
that would just be awful. Like, why bother <laughs> drawing up holes like this? Look at all these, like, delicious muscles on the arm. Let's definitely make sure to get those shapes, those shadow shapes in. Uh, you can see the tricep muscle there. Triceps are hard to build, <laughs> at least for me. I've been working out a little bit lately. Can you believe how perfect this pose is <laughs> for the space? So yeah, if you wanted to, you know, do these studies along with me, you don't necessarily have to pick the same photos that I did. Just uh, grab one of the many, many reference packs they have available and pick whatever pose you like. All right. Let's make sure this is done correctly here. This is kind of a high risk, high risk area. That muscle in the back of the thigh there, inserting into the calf. Yes, that's, that's a beautiful muscle. <laughs> okay, let's be less scratchy with our lines. All right, let's make sure get enough space for the foot. Let's trim that cankle a little bit. Yeah, you know, this for a tricky pose, I feel like it is shaping up here. leg again any limb that is um, going out from the body I find the hardest to uh, measure out just because I have less reference points like less negative shape cues to work with like I don't know whether to start with the foot or like to like draw out the limb to the foot I want to start out with the foot actually because I don't trust myself to get those leg lines right without having something like anchored in place yeah I know it's kind of weird and like I don't know if I'm drawing this foot too big probably This leg looks awkward to me now. It looks too stiff. Maybe I drew the foot too big. Oh well, so it goes. Let's concentrate on other areas now. Do we give this the full like marker treatment or do we just leave it as a sketch like this? Let's give it the full treatment. All right, I'm gonna go in with the highlighter for the hair. I think that worked out really nicely in the other sketches. And let's bring in this lightest Tombow marker. This whole arm can kind of fall into shadow. on the butt <laughs> perhaps perhaps and there we go a little bit 
to have you ended there. Oh well. <laughs> that sense of, of her casting a shadow down onto her body here. Gonna separate her clothes from her body. Make it a little bit clearer as to what's going on. And go in with this darker marker now. for those darker shadows. Then fine tune some of the drawing with a darker marker or darker pen. Oh, making her face a little bit too skinny there. So yeah, this stage is just kind of strengthening everything makes the forms feel more concrete and more like solid. So I'm not outlining everything because I think that would flatten things out just enough to refine the drawing in certain areas where it feels a little bit lost. And it's an opportunity to like redo the drawing if, if you were not happy with it the first time around. Like how I felt about this back leg here. So it is an opportunity for me to redo things because I'm going in with a darker color. Yeah, I feel like that helped a little bit. Maybe a little bit more muscle definition in the arm because that arm is just glorious. Yeah, I think we might be done here. Pretty happy with that, considering it's like a pretty, you know, unconventional pose. I think I'm ready to call this one finished. So this is how our page of studies turned out. Um, I think while I was doing them, I felt a little bit discouraged because one, I felt like it wasn't very interesting for you guys to watch me draw these for some reason. I don't know. I felt like I had nothing really new to add. And two, I, I don't know. I just felt like the poses weren't, like my drawings weren't turning out very well. But I think in the end, overall, I'm pretty pleased with how this page looks with all the drawings in in place. I think my most successful drawing and my favorite drawing is definitely this last one here which is a surprise to me because it is kind of an unconventional pose and it's I would say it's a fairly difficult one but uh, I guess I had enough warm-up uh, leading up to it to make it my best drawing. Um, so far I had a blast working with this 
uh, cappuccino sketchbook by Hannah Mill, and I will continue to use it going forward. So again, if you want to do these kinds of figure drawing studies, I highly recommend checking out Graffiti Studio and their amazing library of reference packs for artists. The reference pack I use specifically for this video will be linked in the description box below, and don't forget to use my coupon code CHRISHONG20 for 20% off all of their reference packs. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video, even though it, you know, at times I <laughs> was a bit of a downer and I felt like, you know, this must be so boring, but do let me know if you didn't find this boring. If you enjoy videos like this, then definitely give me a thumbs up and also make sure to subscribe for more videos like this. So with all that said, I will see you all in my next video. Bye.